This is a video of a mouse that is not hungry. But if we wanna, it will be hungry and eat. This mouse walks normally, but we can get him around himself if we want. This is a peaceful mouse. That doesn't hurt the insect. But if we want to be violent, it will be violent. We control them. <laughs> Welcome to a new episode of The Genius. Today I will talk with you about asshole parasite organisms called Toxoplasmogon. Parasitic organisms and lazy organisms. They like to be lazy. They live on the fabric of beings instead of working with their own hands. Instead of tired. Why that? They steal from other people. Some of them resort to the humiliation of the object. Ensure that all energy in this object come to him. In the process called parasitic castration or parasitic exclusion. The parasitic organism washes the body to ensure that the body doesn't invest any energy in anything else that can be distracted. As if it's trying to find a soulmate. This is talk is not useful. I'm coming to use you. This is the parasitic organism is violent. If it doesn't need to steal your effort, he would have killed you. Like Toxoplasma gondii. For example, it must live in cats and sensory children in the litter of cats. But now there's a problem. There are no cats that eat the other cats litter. As far as I know, and then those children who are in the cat litter, they can't go to the cat and live their parents' litter. But you know, the mice eat cat litter. Now her sons are in the mouse. How do they go to the cat? Simply make the mouse more daring. The mouse will be there. Un afraid of cats. Then a chance that it grabs and eating is higher. And therefore her children wearing the mouse would go to the cat and lives in its effort. Toxoplasma gondi in one way or another get inside and controlling the mouse, letting it behave differently than what it normally does. It's usually afraid of the cats. But after Toxoplasma gondi gets in it, makes it more dare to be eaten. This is a spirit that we need to encourage. We want to control the brain, the big one. And what we need to we already do this in a disease called Parkinson. The average person, the brain vibrations are like this, and the patient Parkinson, the vibrations are like this. In this case, it makes the process of movement difficult. It remains in a tremor, like this in the patient. And then there is neurological atrophy. It's a very difficult thing. But through the so-called deep brain simulation, we put something like a battery connected to the brain so that it controls the vibration of the brain and makes it the normal form that we are talking about. There is a kind of effect on the brain. It's the normal form that we see. The idea that our information about the brain is evolving by understanding its language. And therefore, it's possible after some time to change in it or a change on the form because sometimes its work is wrong as in the case of Parkinson. If the situation I have presented to you is a moral case, a patient will try to help and treat him and you are a villain and you love evil like me there are other evil ways that we can control there's a device called transcranial magnetic simulation since your brain is working by electricity the device throw changes in the magnetic field creates an electric current that stimulates a certain area of the brain that is stop working for a certain period the summary means that it affects the brain actually there is a study at the university of Zurich published in the science magazine they make a group of people played a game called ultimate game in the game you give someone 10 pounds and they say to him to divide it with the next person it's up to you you want to give him two pounds or one pound or five pounds to be fair but there is a problem if the person next to you doesn't agree with the offer that you have made you will both lose the money one out of every 10 people refused in the experiment says no you take nine pound from 10 pound and give me one pound or two pound that's not fair but focus here people who exposed to this simulation in a certain part of their brain agree to the unfair offer by 45 percent we are only by changing certain electricity in the brain make certain people accept injustice but let me tell you all of that is nothing in the face of the technology that i will tell you about in 1979 the scientists Francis Crick, owner of the Nobel Prize in Biology, discovered the form of DNA. The man published an article in Scientific Magazine saying that is the biggest challenge for new scientists that they can control only one cell. Important thing, often the solution to be able to control the cell is the light. On the other side, for four years, microbiologists try to search for proteins that open and locked up when there is a light or not. The idea is that some tiny cells open gates and lock gates through light. All this idea existed. We can't take it and apply it to neurons. And we need to find proteins. In 1971, one scientist discovered cover the proteins called bacteriodopsin on one of these creatures this protein can control whether it opens or locks only through light after we have discovered this protein we begin a long journey in search and control neurons by light those small cells make us crazy and the story was kind of simple takes the gene that makes a protein that is similar and send it into a virus enters the cell and put the gene in it so now we can control it. theoretically it was easy to talk but it took about 25 years after kicks speech to happen we see in 2005 ben Zhang and edward poidum succeed in controlling a neuron only by light and the control is secure and up to fractions of a second and a field open called optogenetics revolution in the world of the brain and nervous a great and very important field in the study of the brain and nervous but i know what i said a theoretical speech just words but look at these videos to see how much control we have got today for example this is a video of a mouse that is not hungry but if we wanna it will be hungry and eat this mouse walks normally but we can get him around himself if we want this is a peaceful mouse that doesn't hurt the insect but if we want to be violent it will be violent we control them
children who control their behavior. If you think there has to be wired to work, I would like to tell you that there is a study published in the Nature magazine in 2015 that only wireless. This became inside the brain, implanted inside the brain. Summary of this, as we understand the brain and its language, we discovered how much we can read and control it. The current impression of the scientists is that your movements, memories, feeling, and imagination, it's a fluid of electricity, chemistry, and nervous cells that work in a certain pattern. We just need to understand more. And who knows, we are just in the first. The brain alone has 86 billion neurons. Each neuron doesn't work on its own. Each neuron may be connected to 8,000 other neurons. The connections between them are very important. All of this and we still not understanding. We are doing all of this but we don't understand everything. But there is a perfect code related to this. If the human brain were so simple that we could understand it, it could be so simple that we couldn't. Actually, it's a perfect code. But imagine what could happen if these many projects and many researchers made us understanding the most complex thing in the world. The human brain. What could happen? We can't read diseases but we can also read his thoughts and control him. So we have to ask important questions. A scientific can control the brain like that with electricity. Where are we? Why we can't control our brain? Why doesn't Parkinson patient tell his brain walk on the right oscillation? Why we can't control our addiction? Why we can't control our emotion? And when I said that, why can't it be controls us? And why can't it be us? And we are. So if you want to know about everything around the world, you have to subscribe the channel and like the video and waiting for the next episode. And don't forget to watch the last one. Bye.